So graft versus host disease occurs when the donor cells in the stem cell transplant recognize the normal body of the patient into whom they've been transplanted and attack that normal body and cause problems. It comes in two variants, acute and chronic. In the acute form, the donor cells attack the skin, the liver, and or the GI tract, and that tends to occur 30 days through the first several months after the transplant. In the chronic form, which long-term survivors of transplant have to deal with more frequently and is again the single most significant long-term complication of the transplant, a potential complication of the transplant, the disease can do all kinds of different things. It can attack the eyes, cause dry eyes, attack the mouth, cause mouth sores, dry mouth, it can attack the skin, cause loss of pigmentation in the skin, cause tightening of the skin, it can attack the joints, cause loss of flexibility in the joints, can attack the lungs, can, uh, can attack the GI tract, making it difficult to maintain weight, can do lots and lots of different things. The spectrum of severity of what it can do ranges from not happening at all to potentially being a very, very difficult, potentially ultimately lethal thing. The treatment of graft-versus-host disease is a complex thing. It's almost, in the setting of chronic graft-versus-host disease, the disease can either be local, affecting a single organ, or it can be affecting the body in multiple different sites. If the disease is affecting a local organ, like the eyes only, then we try to focus our treatment on that local organ. And for each potential organ involved, there are a variety of different treatment options. When the disease is more systemic, when it's in more than one site, then we generally need to use what we call systemic therapies, therapies that affect the entire body. Initially, we virtually always try to manage the disease by starting a drug called prednisone, which knocks down the immune system and is probably our most effective single agent at treating graft-versus-host disease. Problem is, is that prednisone often doesn't work or doesn't work completely, and also, Prednisone itself is a toxic drug if you're on it for sustained periods of time, particularly at any kind of a higher dose. And so for those patients who aren't responding promptly to prednisone, we have an arsenal of second line agents, next things that we can try to try to help manage the disease. The challenge with these second line agents is that none of them is a magic bullet. There's a lot of art in trying to work through the arsenal of options out there for any given patient. For those people who are dealing with chronic graft versus host disease, I think that vigilance and attention to small changes that may, they may be experiencing in their body and calling those to the attention of their healthcare team is an important thing to do for sure. Doing the best you can to garner the support structure you have around you to help deal with the quality of life and financial burdens that might be associated with the disease are critically important. And I think trying to make sure that you can have access to specialists in the field as best as possible is a critically important thing.